This is the coronavirus killer. In this video, you will know the one thing that's going to protect us all from the coronavirus. Welcome to Curiosity TV, the place where you, curiosity addicts, will find answers for so many questions that come to your mind. We hope you like this new video. Remember that our aim is to always satisfy your curiosity, and that's why we are here. If you've wondered how this pandemic can end and what can possibly happen to protect the world from it, this video is for you. Wait till you know about the one and only coronavirus killer. It's going to save us from this disease that has thrown the world into a craze. There is a lot of uncertainty nowadays, and no one can imagine how long the world is going to stay in this pandemic. People are scared, and they're not sure what to do to end this. People are social distancing and self-isolating. But then what? The vaccine is the answer. While so many labs are now testing for a vaccine for coronavirus, it's important to know the origin of how this whole thing works. How can we finally find something that prevents us from getting coronavirus? Wait till we get to that part. Did you know that we can get a vaccine sooner than you think? Or later, really, depending on how optimistic you are. Experts believe that we could get a COVID-19 vaccine between a year and two years. Even when the vaccine gets tested and proves to be safe, effective, with no adverse negative effects, and that it actually produces antibodies, how long do you think it would take to scale? Can you imagine the amount of money and resources needed to prepare a vaccine for the whole world? So it's not a matter of days or weeks. It's a very long process. Some people are sitting at home thinking that this will be over in a month or so when the vaccine comes out. Well, that's not true. We know of drugs that alleviate the COVID-19 symptoms, but not of treatment or of the vaccine. We know how we can protect ourselves socially, but not how to get a vaccine just yet. The thing is, SARS-CoV-2 or coronavirus, the virus causing COVID-19, is a new pathogen. The technologies used to develop it are not tested to result in effective vaccines that we can rely on. And it is so new that no one has immunity against it. It's not like the flu. Not everyone gets the flu when they're exposed to an infected person. That's because their body recognizes it. It's already developed immunity against the flu. Humans are not familiar with coronavirus, so our immunity systems are not prepared for it at all. Once you get in contact with an infected person, you contract the virus. That's why hundreds of labs around the world are working hard to find vaccines and treatments. Pretty shocking how our immune systems have no clue how to deal with the virus, right? Wait till you get to the part where there's actually some hope. Let's first take you on a journey through history. An English doctor called Edward Jenner gave the world the first vaccination for smallpox in 1796. In other words, a preventative treatment for smallpox. Jenner found that milkmaids who had a disease called cowpox did not get smallpox. Smallpox was a disease that caused fevers and skin eruptions for humans. As for cowpox, it led to milder symptoms including blisters. So what Jenner did is that he took fluid from a cowpox blister and put it into the skin of an eight-year-old boy. A blister erupted right away, then the boy recovered. A month and a half later, Jenner did the same thing again and the boy did not contract any disease. This is how the first vaccine for smallpox was born, and doctors followed the technique, which saved millions of people from so many deadly diseases like polio, measles, typhus, and hepatitis B. How can we explain that? What exactly happens inside the body that protects humans from contracting diseases after getting vaccinated? When you get infected with a virus, it takes hold of the body's cells and gives orders to make copies of the DNA of the virus. Then, the immunity system is alerted and so many immune cells start rushing to save the body. It's a frenzy. When the body regains control, it means that special cells were created to fight the disease, but also to store information about the virus. So the body is smart enough to think long term. It could have just fought the disease and won the battle, but instead, it learns from the lesson. It turns into a spy on that virus, so it can recognize it when it tries to attack again. So next time, the immunity system is immediately prepared to fight the virus and protect the body. In some cases, the body can't regain control and the immunity system is unable to fight against the virus anymore. That's why if people have a weak immunity system or they have other health problems, the body might not survive. 
So how does that relate to the vaccine? The reason why the body can be prepared for disease can only be related to the immunity system. What the vaccine does is that it actually trains the immune system. It gives it information about the virus and offers it like a trial version to be prepared when the real thing happens. This is called preventative treatment. It's as if you were treating the body before you even contract the virus. The body already knows what's coming and is prepared for the fight. So this blister Jenner administered into the skin of the boy was nothing but an aspect of the virus. This is how vaccines work. What happens when a vaccine goes into the body? The body treats this aspect of a virus as the real thing. So remember how the immunity system stores information about a virus that attacks it? It does it with a vaccine too. It creates memory cells that store information about the virus and the fight against what it thinks is the real virus. Of course, this process takes time, but these memory cells stay in the body for a long time. Depending on which vaccine it is, these cells stay for a different period of time inside the body. That's why some vaccines need to be taken more often than others. These memory cells are the saviors that allow the body to be prepared when a virus comes. It has the necessary information, so the necessary weapons to defeat the invader. Vaccines have protected humans from so many diseases. The rabies vaccine was developed in 1885, the cholera and typhoid vaccines in 1896, the tetanus vaccine in 1927, the first flu vaccine was licensed in the US in 1945, the measles vaccines with different versions in the 1960s, a plasma-derived hepatitis B vaccine was licensed in 1981, another hepatitis B vaccine in 1989, and these are just some of the milestones in medicine for vaccines that have helped humanity survive. Testing for a vaccine takes a lot of time. It's a lengthy process. Scientists first test for safety, to make sure the virus doesn't have negative adverse effects. Imagine a vaccine causing even worse symptoms than the actual disease it protects against. Then they test for efficacy. It's the phase where you give the vaccine to humans, which is happening now in Seattle, but more on that later. Phase three is when the vaccine is administered on a large scale. If it's safe enough, the company asks the FDA for the vaccine to be licensed. Why do vaccines take such a long time? Well, it's because you must give the vaccine and then wait. You let the people who are vaccinated live their lives normally and see if they've contracted the virus. You analyze them against people who haven't taken the vaccine and see if the vaccine actually works. Now there are different kinds of vaccines depending on what aspect of the virus or in which form of the virus is being used. We're particularly interested in a new technique of vaccines called mRNA vaccines, because that seems to be what's going to be the long-awaited coronavirus killer. You've probably heard about it because Moderna, a Cambridge biotech private company founded in 2010, is using mRNA to try and find a vaccine for coronavirus. The mRNA carries genetic information DNA to ribosomes in a way that results in production of proteins that pertain to the virus. What Moderna does is that it hijacks mRNA in order to carry a copy of the genetic sequence of the virus, allowing the production of antibodies to the virus. That means the vaccine doesn't use a similar version of the virus like other techniques, but just a genetic coding of the virus. Moderna had already been working on a vaccine for Middle East Respiratory Syndrome, MERS, for two years. So when China published the genetic sequence of the new coronavirus in January, Moderna saw how similar it was to the MERS sequence. This is when they started focusing on the coronavirus vaccine. The first human trial was conducted in Seattle in mid-March. That's actually huge because that means they've skipped the animal testing phase and they're conducting human trials simultaneously. That doesn't mean they found a vaccine that can be used already. They're just testing for safety and to make sure it creates antibodies. SARS-CoV-2 or coronavirus also shares its genetic sequence with SARS, the virus from the outbreak we know of in 2003. It actually shares as much as 80 to 90% of its genetic material with SARS. But unfortunately, a vaccine was not developed at the time of the SARS outbreak because the funding was cut off when the disease died away. But that means that scientists can pick up where research for SARS vaccine left off. So yes, the first COVID-19 vaccine is now in clinical trials. So for the now, 
The only way to protect yourself is social, not medical. Social distancing is the one preventative treatment now. Keep six feet between you and anyone around you. Wash your hands a lot and extensively. Do not hug or kiss anyone. The only thing we can do now is to self-isolate and be patient so we can slow down this pandemic. We'll say it again. The last thing the world needs is to crash our healthcare systems by overwhelming our hospitals and our staff with numbers of patients that they cannot handle. We really need to flatten the curve now. So stay informed, stay safe, and stay home. Time for a recap. In this video, you've learned about how vaccines work, a bit on the history of vaccines, and the phases that vaccine development goes through before it can be publicly accessed for the world. You've learned about the new COVID-19 vaccine that's being tested by Moderna and the time that's required before we can receive the vaccine on a global scale. That's all for today, Curiosity Addicts. If you liked our video, please subscribe to our Curiosity TV channel and make sure to turn on the notification bell. And don't forget to leave a comment. Share with us what you think of the time it will take for the vaccine to come out. Are you one of those people on the bright side who think we can have a vaccine in eight months? Or are you part of a more conservative group who think it will take more than two years? Leave a comment and tell us what you think. Thank you for watching.